see this. All right. No word from the dev yet, though. Nope. Huh? I have them on the uh, the the Skype. I'm gonna bring them in right now. Okay. So just one second. Um. And uh, add to group call. I think. Okay, it's dialing. It's calling. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Okay, no, because I have the stream thing up. So there's that. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. Mr. David S. Gavin, how's it going, man? It's going pretty good. Good. Uh, super stressful week, but otherwise, it's good to be here. Oh, what happened? Hmm. Just uh, this weekend is a event where I will be selling boxed copies of I Get This Call Every Day, and mm. I am way behind on getting those prepared, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wait, what, what kind of boxed copies are they? Yeah, tell us oh, about that. Oh, they're, they're the most ghettoest boxed copies ever. Um, basically, there's a DVD case with an insert that has the I Get This Call Every Day uh, stuff on it. It's called the Pack Up Your Things edition. Um, the only other extra thing that's in it is this little booklet, which just contains a bunch of you know insane ramblings by me uh, and a code for the game to redeem on on humble mm -hmm. oh, nice. so it it's it's not very it's not a very physical copy there's not a lot of cool stuff in it but uh it it's what i'm doing so it's it's the uh it's the romanticism how, how do people exactly. get it or is it mm. it'll be available exclusively at an event this saturday called bit bazaar which is happening in toronto it's mm. uh, an offshoot of the Toronto Comic Arts Festival where basically there's going to be about 24 different game makers um, displaying their stuff and selling uh, their wares. Uh, Christine Love, maker of Analog of Hate Story, is going to be there selling uh, physical copies of her game, which puts mine to shame. Wow. Uh, uh, Ryan Creighton of uh, Spolarium and Sissy's Magical Pony Coin Adventure fame will be there. In fact, the creator of Sissy's Magical Pony Guard Adventure, uh, his daughter Cassie, will be on site with her mother, Sewing physical pony corns for people. So, oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's awesome. a thing. Why don't you sew physical copies of your game together and hand them out? <laughs> yeah, I'll, just, I'll make it. some crochet headsets. <laughs> this is. Um, can you can you tell us a little bit about the game before we get into it? Okay, so I get this call every day. Is um, I, I kind of think of it as a call center simulator, though it's only a very specific call mm -hmm. that I used to get in my, in my day job. Um, so, you know, once you click, whether you're using headphones or, or you have speakers, um, basically you just be thrust right into it. It's very simple. Like, there's only one real screen to the game that changes a little bit. Um, and two voices, both of which are mine. And... Um, Do you say banana it, bread? <laughs> I do not say banana bread or shots fired. <laughs> I think sh hashtag shots fired is my second favorite hashtag of the world. <laughs> First being so, hashtag Mike Bethel. Yes. Oh, Mike <laughs> Bethel. I was going to ask which was number one, and I'm very happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is, that, that's so funny that this is um, like a call center because that is something that's like real kind of, I want to say like the, most people would say near and dear to my heart, but obviously since working in a call center, it's not really near and dear to anything except <laughs> like yeah. woe and sadness. Um, but I, I, I've had, you know, so I worked, um, you know, QA for a call center. And so mm -hmm. when I was playing through this game, I was just like, oh, everything in this is so familiar. And so like having that kind of like perspective to this game um, just kind of gave it uh, a whole like it's just like another insight for me and just like kind of like a almost a an inside joke if you will. <laughs> and, yeah. and you know that's funny cuz I never really thought people who are familiar with call centers would really enjoy I got this call every day. I thought it would just be the worst thing in the world for those people like oh man this is my job I got to I got to play this now. <laughs> But it's it's so relatable to us that have had that experience yeah. and had to deal with you know these these certain types of individuals, especially um, in the in the way that we're going to demonstrate um, in just a second. Um, so, yeah, I got to see this. Yes, so I, I actually I did work in a call center once. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah? Awesome. Awesome. So that's doing that's cable the... internet tech support. Oh. Really? <laughs> <laughs> like the worst oh. job in the world. <laughs> Although back then it wasn't like as shitty as it is now. We were actually like technical people. We weren't like, you know, like people over in freaking India who've never used cable internet in their life. And we and we're just reading a script. Mm -hmm. We actually knew about routers and, and uh nodes and, and we could actually troubleshoot problems like right there. 
Did you so. did you try turning it off and on again? <laughs> no, we never did that shit. That's like that's like the new age of of internet tech support. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Alrighty, alrighty. So, um, thank you very much, David, for for hanging out with us again. Um, let's get into your game. So, um, as the first screen shows, I have a blinking light. So let's accept this call. I should probably turn up my volume here so I can hear. <laughs> Is there supposed to be uh, sound? Not yet. Okay. Not until you give the green. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, all right, that's right. Um, so when I accept this call, I have two options. I could use the standard greeting or I could use the tease, the terse greeting, which I guess is like kind of like an angry or just kind of like... Rah, rah, rah. And that would be bad for QA. So we're going to go with the, uh, the standard greeting. Do Hello, it. General Inquiries. My name is David. How can I help you today? Uh, yeah, hi. I need to change my address. Click it. Oh, I don't. <laughs> what the hell? We've got no sound. We've it, got no audio coming in. Give it a sec. And, uh, oh, you won't have audio, um, David, unless you're watching oh. the stream, and then you're going to hear a double. Yeah, you'll okay, hear a okay. so, voice come through. So yeah. you just make sure you relay to us what you're hearing. Okay. No problem. I, well, I'm, like, I'm watching the stream, but I don't have the stream's audio so that it's not doubled up, because hearing myself echoed back to me just freaks me the hell out. Yeah, hearing yourself, like, echoing twice, because you'd hear yourself talking right now, and then you'd hear yourself <laughs> in your other voice talking to, <laughs> yeah. oh, man, I can only imagine. Um, so well, I'm gonna hit the uh, I'm gonna hit um, ask for the social security number because we need to identify this person that we're talking to. Can I get your sin, please? My what? Your social insurance number. That's private. Why should I give that to you? Well, I need it to look up your account. I'm only changing my address. Yes, but in order to do that, I need so uh, what type of support is this, or what type of call it's center? One, 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 well, two, two, I mean, two, it's, it's never given away or? in the game, right? Okay. I mean, it was based off of my last job, um, which was with the Canada Revenue Agency. Okay. So it essentially was, it, it was actually less support. I mean, it was support in a sense in that generally, people are either calling to get clarification on tax issues, or mm -hmm. There's the minutia like changing their address, setting up direct deposit, um, when's my check coming, you know, stuff like that. Okay. So now this gentleman has given us an invalid SIN. Um, what is it? Social in insurance. Insurance number. Yeah. Number. Yeah. Because you're, you're from Canada. I just remembered. Okay. So he gave us an invalid one. So I'm just going to say nope. Nope. What do you mean <laughs> nope? I mean nope. That's not your sin. I'm pretty so sure you're trying to, like, catch people giving money. you bogus information? No, this is basically just, like, a simulator of, like, the type of shit that you're going to hear in a call center. So basically, the game is going to be us trying to tell this person to give us more information. He's going nice. to respond by giving us almost information, like, yeah. information that's, like, not quite there. So we can't get past our own security from being in a contact center and divulge, like, privacy oh. information. Um, and so it's kind of like the, it'll be like a first person perspective of the struggles that we have to go through every single day to okay. get the information out of troublesome right. people, or at least people that are just not quite, they, 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 they're almost there, but they're not quite there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. These questions exist because there are people who will call in and try to impersonate other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, in, in my experience, if anyone ever successfully got away with that, I'd never know because they did, you know, they had all the answers to the security questions and uh, they, they passed themselves off perfectly as the other person and I was none the wiser. Mm -hmm. It's the people who do the dumb things like <laughs> call on behalf of their daughters because, you know, their kid is, you know, 21 and spoiled and never deals with anything on their own. But they're answering the security questions like they are their daughter that you usually catch in the middle of it, like, you know, stumbling over your birthday. Mm hmm. You know, weird stuff like that. Yeah. All right. So how many, how many people can call in in total? In the game? Like it's, not, it's not just the same character all the time, right? It is the same character all the time. Oh, it is. It's just, okay. it's just the one. But there's, like, the, there's like multiple paths and, like, uh, different, like, endings. But it's just okay. to kind of, like, showcase how um, it's just, it, it's basically, it's, it's really emulating, like, real life. So wow. people get this call every day. Wow. Um, so it's just kind of like a, a unique perspective. So it's kind of like mm. a, I don't know, it's, 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 it's a neat kind of insight, I think. Yeah. So um, this gentleman, he keeps giving me the wrong information, so I'm going to tell him well, that it's not coming up. The number you gave me isn't coming up. Is that a gentleman? Can you check the number, please? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought it was a lady. 
<laughs> it's a nice it's gentleman. One 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 <laughs> two 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 three three. Thank you. It's it's actually it's it's voiced by David in almost yeah. the the well David is like the main like my voice as the player's uh -huh. voice and then like pseudo David is <laughs> <laughs> is the iPhone user. Um, so um, now we have his name is Swarth, comma Billy J, and uh, we're going to respond. Uh, well, he needs to. We need to get this gentleman to give us his full name, date of birth, and address. So let's... Before you pick an option, uh, users have rightfully pointed out that on this screen I have accidentally um, effed up and have a seven-digit sin yeah. as opposed to eight. Like, yeah. sins are actually nine digits, and that's why I went with eight to avoid ever being confused with using someone's actual information. Mm -hmm. But I missed a two in this drawing, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, we'll we'll just we'll just make a patch. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, hey, one <laughs> so full name. Can I have your full name, Bill? I'm sorry. Is that your full name? Yes. And so we asked for his full name. He just responds, Bill. And so we said, Is that your full name? And he says, Yes. When his name is obviously Billy J. Swarth. So we're gonna have to ask him. Um, well, I can either say it doesn't match or for his first and last. So we're not gonna be a dick right now, so let's just ask I need first your and first last. and your last name. Well, why didn't you say so? My full name is Billy Swarth. Can he get pissed off at you and ask for your manager? Uh, yeah. In fact, we'll see. We'll see if uh, if it goes that far. Ooh, I like that idea. Hmm. Um, so I'm just gonna say still doesn't I'm sorry, match. Sorry, that still doesn't match. Do you have a middle name or an initial? It's Billy J. Swarth. Jeez. <laughs> uh, so you gave us his, his name in kind of like a rude way. He says, it's Billy J. Swarth. Jeez. So I I'm, I'm kind of want to see how far I can push this guy. Can I have your date of birth, please? Go for November it. November 10th. Um, and what year was that? He gave, me, he gave me the date and the month, but he didn't give me the year, so I have to ask for that. Um, and then I'm going to call him young because he was born in 1991, which is three years younger than me, which wow, is obviously I get young. to make fun of him. Listen, <laughs> I pay my taxes, and I don't have to put up with this fucking shit. I want to speak to your manager now. He okay, asked for sure. my manager. I just need to put you on. Oh, board no. I see if my supervisor's available. <laughs> I got an email. Uh-oh. I'm what not talking to another escalated call from you. Pack your things. You're fired. That escalated shit. really quickly. Wow. <laughs> Good job, good job. I get this call every day. Who, who's Pete Massio? Did I pronounce his name right? Yeah, Pete Massio. He's he's a really good guy. I think he currently writes for uh, the Indie Game Magazine. Oh. And um, so he w he was covering the game for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I just, you know, I follow him on Twitter. He mentioned about this old album that he had put out. And uh, he never really did anything with it. And uh, I, I downloaded it, and this one song just really stuck out as, like, just capturing that feeling. Right. Sort of, like, that sort of, like, pretty hopelessness <laughs> of the whole situation. And so I approached him, and he's like, yeah, whatever, just didn't include in the game. That's, that's no problem. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so, yeah, that, that's how uh, the end music came about. I like that a lot. Um, obviously, you guys, well, at least Ohm can't hear it. David, obviously, has probably heard the, the song before. But, so screw you, Ohm. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> said that I'm in the credits. I don't believe that. What? Well, I credit, I thanked everyone in the Toronto Game Making community, or if Eagle Eyes will check that screen again. Uh, community. I misspelled community as well. <laughs> <laughs> you would not make it past my QA. <laughs> I'm surprised they even let me publish this. <laughs> By they, I mean me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, didn't you do this? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, did, there, there's some controversy around this game, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, what, do you want to talk that? about that for a second? Um, yeah. Well, I okay. mean, it's your story. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this game, I released it on December 21st. And like I, like I had said before, I worked for Canada Revenue Agency. I, it was just going on my fourth year there. And it was really the way I was getting burnt out at that job, which inspired me to make the game in the first place. Now, because I worked at Canada Revenue Agency, they're a government agency. And if I were to release anything, like say a YouTube video or um, you know, like a tax application or, or anything that may in some way 
be linked to or even tangentially related to my job at Canada Revenue Agency, I'm supposed to submit it to a manager for their approval mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. doing anything with it. And I knew if I did that with I get this call every day, it would never come out. Yeah. So I never did. And I, I, I knew what the rule was, and mm -hmm. I deliberately went against it. Right. So you're going to prison. No. Uh, I'm just joking. So what <laughs> happened is, is I got interviewed by the Toronto Star back in January. And, you know, I get this call every day. got a little bit of press when it first came out. Kotaku covered it. Yeah. Um, you know, some other places covered it. It was, you know, it was doing well, better than I thought it was. I thought I was making like, like 20 bucks off the game, and I did way more than that. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was starting to die down, and, and I, I really thought, okay, it's, excuse me, I'll move on to the next thing. And then I get a call from the Toronto Star, and not just a call. Like they emailed me, they called me, they tweeted at me, and I'm like, okay, uh, someone wants to talk to me. I got pretty excited. It's like, hey, this is a real newspaper. They yeah. want to talk about my game. Yeah. Um, and they had figured out that I worked for Canada Revenue Agency, and I didn't really do enough to say no. Like I didn't flat out lie to them. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, that worked against me later on down the way, but. What they ended up publishing is this article about how, hey, do you hate the tax man? Well, they kind of hate you too. And here's this online oh, rant oh, against no, taxpayers. No. And, you know, of course, it had my name, David S. Gallant, who works for the Canada Revenue Agency. Weed Eater just uh, threw one of the articles. Yeah, both of them there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that hit the, the front page of the Toronto Star. And then I noticed wow. in the article that they had reached out to. Uh, the Minister of Revenue, you know, the politician in charge of Canada Revenue Agency for her comment. And I'm like, oh, shit's going to hit the fan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, long story short, I had a meeting with some of the higher, like, n not my boss, but my boss's 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 boss and mm -hmm. that person's boss and that person's boss and someone from staffing. And uh, they asked me a bunch of questions, uh, set me in a room for an hour and a half to consider. And uh, by 5 o'clock that day, they had handed me my termination letter. Oh. So, so you were making this when you were still employed. Yep. Yeah, and I wasn't wow. making this on company time or anything. Like I had yeah. actually moved to part-time schedules so I could work on games. Yeah. Because uh, I, was, I was honestly at the point where I just wanted to quit entirely. But uh, yeah. you know, they convinced me to stay on you know, for health benefits and whatnot. Well, I knew a guy that, um, or one of the guys I worked with when I was doing the, the internet tech support, uh, he wanted to make a Counter-Strike map, and word got out that like they were kind of planning on basing it off of the offices, and he almost got fired for that. It's like ridiculous. having like a shooting game based off their oh. building, or a map based off their building. Uh, that's... I don't know. It's it was a cool building, though. It was a been real a fun cool map. building. They, they had a paintball court map. downstairs. Um, <laughs> oh, that's that's that's, ridiculous. that's yeah. yeah. That's that's crazy, man. I can't believe. Yeah, it. it 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 was really crazy. I mean, like the concept of being fired for making a video game still boggles my mind. Right. <laughs> and so, are you just uh, developing full time now? Uh, pretty much. Like I was really lucky in that after the game came out. A huge swell of support came up. Uh, tons of people promoted the game, like a lot of other developers who mm -hmm. I admire but never really had spoken to before, started picking up on the story and, and mm -hmm. tweeting it out. You know, it got yeah. covered on many more websites. And, uh, you know, I, I, I made a bunch of money on it. it, it it's, the money's run out by now. Mm -hmm. So I'm at the point where I've, I've you know, definitely got to do something else. Uh, but for the yeah, since January, I've basically been uh, you know taking my time to to work on games. Nice. So what are you planning next, or are you not really sure at this point? <laughs> uh, there's a couple things. There's um, so number one, uh, one of my games before I get this call every day was this uh, jam game. It was made at the Toronto uh, Game Jam in 2012, mm -hmm. and it was called Apocalypse Later. It's a little adventure game about. A little boy named Gary who's a hell demon and he's just lazy as hell. And it's his job to take over the world. Um, and he just decides, you know, he keeps trying to do the tasks on his list. It doesn't work out and he just says, ah, fuck it. So the guy who wrote that game is uh, working with me to work on a sequel. So that's more of a long-term thing. Yeah, there we go. It's okay. Apocalypse Later there on the stream. Yeah, nice. Um, 
so we're working on a sequel to that, but that's that's definitely going to be a long term thing. Like he's got uh, the starting of a really good script, uh, some really funny stuff in there, uh, but I'm kind of behind on the tech angle out of it. Then um, uh, I've decided, and and this is kind of a probably a, a really dumb decision, uh, but I've decided to make a sequel. So I get this call every day. Really? Mm. Yeah, and this and like I had been really resisting the idea of making a sequel to it because I really thought that I get this call every day said everything that needed to be said. Mm-hmm. Tons of people have said, you know, hey, this would be great if it had more calls, add more situations. Um, and it really is really short because it, it was a lot of work just getting that one call. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I, I've been thinking about it lately and, um, and really uh, – I think the impetus came when one of the guys from Sony Europe started tweeting out saying, hey, any Vita developers want to help? I get this call every day, get on Vita. Whoa. Hmm. And I haven't had any bites on that. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that'll happen. Uh, I, might, I might do something with PlayStation Mobile. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. It's like a, just a DLC thing. Yeah, like even if it wasn't uh, like a cost thing or even if I, you know, maybe put it out, uh, you know, when the sequel comes out. Yeah. Um, But it just got me really thinking about the idea of, you know, taking the simulation further and, uh, you know, doing more with it. Like, yes, adding more calls because there was tons of calls that I got on a regular basis that are just as ridiculous and and sort of really show, like, the bad workplace that it is when you're when you're working in, in a call center yeah um I, I see you're playing apocalypse litter right now and i, I apologize it it's so bad <laughs> <laughs> no i uh, like it <laughs> the writing's good but just like the functionality of it it's just like you got that big gray bar on the side of the screen the entire time and just you're clicking these little blue squares and <laughs> it's it, it was made in in like 72 hours the code is horrible did you uh. did you make it for a, a particular event or yeah, yeah. The Toronto Game Jam is an annual a game jam that is massive in this city. Um, you know, last in 2012, about 400 people uh, filled like a three floor space. This wow. year, we had about like 450. Mm-hmm. Uh, like this year, like someone actually managed to set up a tent inside one of the rooms, <laughs> and and so we jammed in almost like a campground type thing. So it's a major event in Toronto. Um, you know, some 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 games that are coming out soon uh, have even originated from uh, the Toronto Game Jam, like uh, Capybara's upcoming Super Time Force. That started life as a game at Toe Jam. Did it? Mm-hmm. I got to play uh, Time Force at uh, PAX East this year, and it's a really good game. Um, nice. Cappy is uh, they I love that. I love that team. Um, really good stuff coming out of there. They are an awesome group of people. I was so jealous. Um, there was a time when I was interning with Ryan Creighton, the, the Untold Entertainment guy. Mm-hmm. His office is literally right across the hall from Barra. Oh, wow. Mm. And I, I've only gotten a chance to step into their office a couple times. You know, they're, <laughs> they're, they're really friendly. They're really open. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and they do some amazing games. Like I'm a huge fan of their work. Um, so yeah, like this uh, this sequel, I want to uh, I want to do really stupid things with it, like make it fully three D. Okay. So that you have more to look around at, but <gasps> less wait, do I just got the idea? It's Call Center Simulator 2013, and it's <laughs> it's the exact same thing as Surgeon Simulator, except you work a call center. I am I'm just trying to imagine like the videos of people like picking up the <laughs> keyboards and trying to throw them and watching them swing back with the cable <laughs> trying to like pull a push pin out of their cubicle wall and jam it into their other hand <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you had to post today's bulletin board oh it's ridiculous i i i don't know if i'll go that that dumb with it like with the the surgeon because I, I admit that's an inspiration <laughs> But that's oh that that is some that's bad. <laughs> I think I think there's something we could do with that. But uh, Papers Please has also been a really huge inspiration. That game, the way its interface works, mm-hmm. the you know it, it's um, it just how slick it feels in in terms of how you you operate with it. I'm really jealous of what Lucas Pope did with that, and uh, and and dude got greenlit. I don't know if you guys saw that. 
Did it? Papers. Yeah, papers. Please. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Accepted into Steam. It's I. Yes. <laughs> I, yes. I played it uh, like on the stream at some point, and I'm gonna put a video up on the channel sometime next week. But yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting game. Um, and like you said earlier, the interface is just absolutely great. Um, exactly. I loved. It, it was just. It, it was just simulating leaving or working at the passport place. Yeah, and like. There, there obviously there's some liberties taken there, like that little discretion uh, pointer outer system that he's got there. But mm -hmm. it's still, oh, I just, it feels so good just dragging papers back and forth, looking through that manual, mm -hmm. you know, the, the feel of that stamp. It, it, oh, it's really good. There's, uh, yeah, there's, I think there's a lot to say or like a lot that we can kind of take from that and uh, put that towards, you know, I get this call every day. Um, exactly. Especially, like, I wanted to do more with the computer interface. Like, my little hand-drawn screens are nice and all, but nothing gave you a sense of just how bad the software is in most of these places. Mm -hmm. Like, with the government, everything was operated with the F keys. Like, F1, F2, F3, and, like, there's seven different applications mm -hmm. that all use, that have the same functions but use different keys for them. So, like, closing the application in one might be F12, and another it might be F7. Um, and then sometimes there's, like, F24. So it's like, what the hell is F24? It only goes up to 12. <laughs> oh, no. You hit shift and then figure out which key plus 12 is the right F key. So, like, oh, you have to hit F19. Well, I guess that's shift F7. Why couldn't you just say shift F7? No. You got to <laughs> say, oh, it. <clears throat> It's and and I, I will do that. I will make you hit your F keys <laughs> to operate a game. I will do that to you. F twenty four. Obviously, you just hit F twelve twice. And uh, oh yeah, yeah, just hit it twice, right? That'll work. And then there's like P A one and P A two, which is apparently like page up and page down. It's like thanks, that made sense. <laughs> oh, it's it. I mean, I've worked in different call centers that have all had their janky softwares at different stages like some have been terminal based some have been just like really bad java guis mm -hmm. and it just feels like a universal thing having to deal with dumb software yeah uh like the contact center that i work with i don't want to talk too much about it but yeah the application system that they use there there's just a lot of different things that kind of could be a lot better i feel um, mm -hmm. And sometimes they're just not as streamlined as they could be, but that's also because they're kind of like a central hub to probably a larger organization, which is just kind of scattered throughout a lot of different parts of uh, the world, or you know, America, or you know, Canada, or so on, so on and so forth. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I can't. I don't know how to solve the uh, the call center crisis of uh, the world. But I'm just kidding. I have no speaking idea. of call centers, I've been getting calls all day today from, by. Insurance companies who think that I put in a, a web lead at my phone number. It's been quite uh, quite a good time today oh, answering okay. all these phone calls. A web lead? Yeah. Yeah, like I want insurance quotes. They said, oh, well, didn't you didn't you file an insurance quote request at 3.40 a.m.? And I'm like, no. You sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I've man. had the same insurance agent like since I was 16 years old and I started driving. It sounds like something that you do. Yeah, oh, three forty a.m. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's ridiculous! It's like it's been like seven companies now today. It sounds like someone got a hold of your phone number and decided to prank you. But that's what I'm thinking. Hmm. Maybe it's somebody in chat. I just lost Apocalypse later. Uh oh, I, did I you go back to bed? I napped. <laughs> <laughs> what that that kills you? <laughs> I have a I have a secret for you. Um, that's the exact same thing that happens if you complete all the tasks anyways. Oh, okay, good. The whole point of the game, because we were under such pressure to do it in a short time frame, um, basically most of the choices have no consequence. Mm -hmm. Like when you're building the virus, any options you pick will get you through that. Um, once you complete everything, you basically find out that the world is not affected at all by anything you've done. <laughs> and you just end up going back to bed anyways. Oh, all right. So it's kind of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. All right. And I think the last game is I'm going to play Hemo Racers. I've tried no. to play Hemo <laughs> Racers before. 
And I wish I had online support so I could play with you. Yeah, I know. You should. Let's just uh, let's do that. Just just uh, right click properties and then check the uh, online tab and then you'll be good. So <laughs> most of your games can be played on the web. Exactly. Uh, okay. Pretty much everything. I mean, I I'm a Flash developer right now, so. Wait a minute. Yeah. I need to go back and listen to this opening song again. Yes, it was yes, really true. good. Yes, just hit escape. Just hit escape. Yeah. Hitting? No, no, no. I, it's, okay. it's a, I got back. Oh, I kid. This is my new jam. What is it? What's that website that makes their your own jam? Or like, this is my jam? Well, this is now my jam. This is my jam. Yeah, that's uh, that's the. Uh, I wanted to say lyrical, but he's not singing. That's the musical stylings of one uh, Ricky Lima, mm -hmm. who is an awesome musician. Um, have you guys have you guys heard of um, Spooky Squid? You know the guys who did um, uh, They Bleed Pixels. Yes. No. So. Sp oh, oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that you're home. Um, yes, I, I I know of them. <laughs> Okay, well, Spooky Squid, he did another uh, game. I think he's got a, a free version available, and he wants to expand it out. Uh, but it's called Russian Subway Dogs. Okay. <clears throat> because this is an actual thing. There are dogs that live in the Russian subways, and it's this cool little score chase where you're barking people to scare their bread away from them and then jumping to try and catch it and not hmm. letting it get eaten by other dogs. And the Russian-style tune that plays in that is by Ricky Lima as well, and it is freaking awesome. The dude is so good. Hmm. All right. I'm sorry. I, I didn't uh, mean to be quiet, but I'm trying to find my my pulse here. Yeah. And uh, oh no, I can pulse. hear it. I think it's more like da 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 da, da, da like that. No, no, I got this, man. I think oh, yeah, I bled. Yeah, like, I think I bled twice. What do you do in this game then? How does this work? It's it's Beat it's like a pulse. local co-op game. Okay. And so I'll show you. I'll play against myself here. Um, yeah, okay. I, f I feel bad that, that I didn't get time to, to put any sort of, like, single-player support. Like, it's something meaningful for just one player. Mm -hmm. Again, this was a game jam game. This game I made two days before it was fired. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, wow. <laughs> it was the, uh, the, the global game jam that happened in January. And uh, so I teamed up with Ricky Lima and uh, Royal Edwards. Royal did all the, the graphics, I did the programming, and Ricky did the music. Hmm. Is there is there a trick to find your pulse? Not really. I mean, it's it's just it's it's a steady beat, and as you do better, it, it requires you to get faster. I don't know what you're doing with that top heart, but oh man, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I I'm just um I'm, I'm I'm hitting buttons right now. <laughs> this and that's what happens if you just flail around. It'll just bleed out. <laughs> yeah, this the bottom one knows what the hell's going on. The top doesn't quite <laughs> as much. See, here's so here's the secret to Hemo Racers. I don't really fucking know what I did with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still not 100% certain how I managed to program the system. It just kind of worked. It's super weird, though. Hmm. I, I love it. Um, I, I wish I had someone other than this empty coffee cup to, to play with. 13 out of 10. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, anything else? Let's see. Anyways, um, I think I think that's that's about a wrap um, for 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 David S. Gallant. Thank you very much for hanging out with us today. That was so fun. Um, hey, thanks yeah. for having me. Definitely. Yeah, of course. Um, go ahead and uh, give a little pimp to. I get this call every day. Let the people know where they can pick it up right now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's on my website at uh, davidsgallant.com. Uh, it's just being wonderfully displayed on the screen right now, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, just posting a link to it directly in the chat. There we go. And um, so it's there. It's also up on Steam Greenlight. Could really use your votes. We're like, oh, so close. But oh, so far, as most things are with Greenlight. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. And uh, I just made a Facebook page. I don't know why, but I did. <laughs> well, it might it, it might be good. Might be a good idea, um, but yeah, a lot of things are going to be building up to um, to the sequel announce. It's it's going to be crowdfunded. I still don't have the details of that, but uh, it's going to need money to happen. So mm -hmm. we'll be uh, you know begging for it. Hey, money. Good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, when that comes about, I will let you folks know. Yeah, certainly. Okay, that sounds good. Um, awesome. Thank you again for hanging out. Feel free. Uh, I think I'm not even sure what I'm going to do with this stream. I haven't really planned 
anything much <laughs> after this. Um, but, uh, hey, chat, uh, thanks, everyone, for hanging out. People are asking for Dark Souls. Are you familiar with Dark Souls? Uh, I I am familiar with the game. I am uh, I'm actually currently working on Demon Souls at the moment. I haven't jumped into Dark Souls yet. Oh, uh, okay. Mm. Uh, I, I've yet to. I don't have a PS3, so I wasn't able. I missed the whole Demon Souls bandwagon, and then Dark uh, Souls is currently putting its uh, large. Heavy... Demon Souls is still good, man. Yeah, you keep telling me about it. Um, you should jump in. I'm still not playing it. I you you all right? Um. Please, Yo. go ahead and port it from the PS3 to the PC so I can play it. I'll, I'll get right yeah, on just that. Get, just, just do just that. Just right, right click, <laughs> yeah. PS3 support. I'll, I'll just put it in my PC, yeah. People are yeah. asking for uh, for Dota 2. <laughs> I could maybe Carrie play J. Smith and Dota 2. Dota 2. I, I could do one game with you. you one. Do one game of Dota? I hey, could. Pascal, do you have Dota? I don't have Dota. Actually, I, I got to run, guys. My wife ordered dinner just before the stream started. Oh, and great. And she's patiently <laughs> waiting for me to go. All right. Well, tell All her right. I said hi. Thank you again for hanging out, sir. Um, that was that was fun as hell, and I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice it's to meet you, dude. Take care. I'll be back at some point. Heck yeah. yeah. Of course. All right. All right. See ya. <laughs>